Hello, welcome to Temple Baptist Church for Sunday School today. We are in the book of Genesis, have been the entire quarter, so we're going to stay there and we'll even, uh, next quarter I think we stay in, in Genesis, and today we're in Genesis chapter 9. we got verses 1 through uh, 15 that we're going to uh, look at and try to say a little bit about, may not be able to say everything we want to, but I want to read our memory verse to us, and we get to thinking about this. Uh, it's in uh, Genesis chapter 9, and it's verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. Our society today is really, you know, flipping the switch, I guess you could say. A lot of things are happening. Not everybody's a agreeing with this, but uh, we know from reading the Bible and studying the Bible that uh, God speaks of children in Psalms chapter 127 verses 3 and 5 as a gift and a reward uh, from the Lord. And, and, you know, God's design in the beginning has always been for parents to be filled with great joy when they have a child. And, you know, in most cases today, that is still the prominent thing, you know, when you find out that you're going to be a parent for the first time, or a grandparent, or a great-grandparent, you know, there's great joy in that, but a lot of people seem to look at this, and the concept as a child is more of a burden than a blessing, and, uh, you know, you know, pregnancy becomes an inconvenience, and a, a problem to be solved, a, a tragedy, you know, but anything but an indication of God's blessings. This, these children are God's blessings. And, uh, you know, and I said this key passage that we just read about God, the value of blessings of, uh, that God places on human life. And so as we study this lesson today and we see uh, Noah and his family as they come off the ark and uh, start to do as God has instructed them to do, let's, let's just think about our own attitude how we think about life, not just children. You know, yeah, we uh, really want to defend those helpless children. Uh, and so, but uh, how about all of human life? It doesn't matter, just human life. And, you know, we need to ask God to give us some compassion uh, where we might be lacking in, uh, you know, our, our wisdom and to encourage others and, and all of that. So we, we've got some things that we can uh, work on in our daily lives, our daily work, walk with God. Uh, you know, and I think history has demonstrated that uh, human beings have the, you know, and they, they want to devalue others. They want to devalue others. Prejudice based on skin color, our ethnics, our is one manifestation of this truth. You know, that's, that's one of the things people talk about, you know, prejudice and all that. Child abuse, sexual abuse, spousal abuse, neglect of the elderly, abortion, and even bullying are expressions of the devaluing of human life. And it's no, nobody uh, re respects it, but... Uh, Genesis 9 declares, and we're going to look at today, that God values all human life, and if he values all of it, we should too. We should too. So what, just a, a brief question, and we don't have time, we don't, we're not in a situation where you can answer me verbally, but just think about it. What would the world look like if all people valued human life? That's what it was intended to be. Everybody inv value it, uh, value human life and get along and all that. And so when we open Genesis chapter 9, we'll look a little bit at the context that is uh, before us. We're in Genesis chapter 9, and then we have the fifth time that God has communicated with Noah. And, and in this case, he's, he's speaking uh, words of a renewed blessing, a covenant relationship that he uh, uh, would establish with Noah and all created life, all that is there. And as, you know, God instructs Noah or addresses Noah and his family, you know, he gives them specific things that they are to do, four areas of life that God is instructing them to do. You know, the 
the understanding the context may be as more important than the actual uh, lesson itself, but I think we get the essence of what God is talking about here and, and where we're at in this. And so, you know, these, these uh, communications, these four things, four areas of life, you know, first God echoed the instructions given to Adam and Eve to fulfill the earth with human life. You know, as well say this, Noah is the second Adam, isn't he? He is the second Adam. He's charged with repopulating the planet. And, uh, you know, page of human history, we're basically blank again. Noah and his family are the only, only human race that get off that ark. And so they're going to start the, uh, uh, again of, of reestablishing humanity. And then God spoke to Noah about the plans for sustaining life on earth. Now, this is going to involve a new relationship with the animals. You know, before the flood, uh, the relationship was one thing, and then now they're going to be able to consume some protein and eat meat. And uh, you know, uh, you know, back in you know, in Adam and Eve, Adam was a farmer, and his son Abel was a shepherd, and and now Noah and his offsprings are going to uh, become hunters, along with tilling the ground herding livestock, and, you know, just I think it comes as a, uh, eating meat came with an important guidelines, do not consume the blood. The blood is important to God. The blood is important. The third part of the God's address involves the protection of life. Again, going back to our memory verse, that shedding of blood, and, you know, we, we've dealt with that ever since the beginning uh, Cain, uh, Lamech, and those, uh, you know, Genesis chapter 6 speaks twice of the fact that violence at that time filled the earth. I think just a moment, you think about that, what about today? Does violence not fill the earth today? Yes, it does. And so because of this, God speaks directly to Noah about life, the penalty for shedding blood, and uh, because humanity was created in the image of God, attacking another person represents an attack on God. You're, we're attacking God when we do that. And now finally, he's going to speak of his covenant with Noah and all creation. Now this covenant was a unilateral agreement. The Lord was responsible for fulfilling the promise. Now, that's, you know, his responsibility, and God's going to do his responsibility. All Noah and his family had to do was stay faithful and trust him. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? God has already established a covenant, and he's going to go on. We're going to go on to talk about that. You know, he's never going to cause a flood again, never going to destroy uh humanity that way. He doesn't say he's not going to destroy it. It's going to be destroyed by fire. And, uh, you know, he even gives us a sign. The rainbow is a sign that it's not going to do that. But then, you know, here we are. God's talking to Noah. God's talking to his family. And then the chapter really closes, chapter 9 really closes with a, a, a dark shadow after cultivating a vineyard. Noah becomes drunk and Naked, and we know what his sons does. Kind of mocks him, and and then a couple of them help cover him up, and then the curse is placed on uh, on uh, 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 Ham's son Canaan. And I don't, I don't really know why he done that. Why didn't he just curse the one that done it? But no, he curses the grandson. So, okay, here we are. They are alone. I don't know how many of you watch uh, some of the reality shows. There used to be a a show on that I watched quite a bit it was called Dual Survivor, and then there's Survivor, and there's uh, television reality shows as Alone, and, and and I like Life Below Zero and Life Below Zero, the Next Generation, because uh, they're out there in the wilderness. They're out there, basically. Well, by they should be by themselves, but if there's a film crew out there with them, the reality of life, they're not out there by themselves. But but just how would you feel? If you were completely alone and on your own in the wilderness, because that's what we—that's what we've got here, you know. 
knowing the family have just uh, literally the only human beings left on the earth. They're the only ones there, and you know, you know, they begin the process of rebuilding humanity. And, and but God has some specific rules for them, and you know, what would be the positive if you're uh, uh, completely alone in the, the wilderness. Well, now, positive, I could think of, you really get close to God. You'd really, you know, if I could find my way around and navigate, I'd be, that'd be all right. The negative would be not being able to find my way out, not being able to stay warm, not being able to eat, not being able to do a, a lot of those things. And so, you know, and so we're going to look at, today, we're going to look at uh, God's directions for Noah and his family and uh, now let's just consider how his words to them it will challenge us to promote and protect the sanctity of human life. You know, we may not think about that too much when we think about uh, Noah and the ark and all that, but look at the protection that God has for Noah and his family and all the animals that were taken on the ark. So, uh, beginning with verse 1, and we'll read through verse 4. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the flesh of the sea, into your hands are they delivered. Every, morn, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herbs have I given you all things, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. Okay, blessing. He's, he's blessing him. God bless Noah. That means to bestow some good uh, uh, advantage to someone. And, you know, he's, he's blessing them. He's showing favor and grace. And, you know, they're the that it was a new beginning uh, of God's creation. And, and I think he's repeating the blessing here that he gave to Adam in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. And so, you know, and then what are you supposed to do? You'll be fruitful and multiply and replenish a second creation. Here we are, a second creation. And so replenish the earth. That again, just, you know, the, the uh, entire population of the world had been reduced to only eight people, two of each kind of unclean animals, and seven pair of clean animals, minus the uh, those sacrificed by Noah in chapter eight. So this is all that's there. That that's there. There it was those uh, eight people, and you know the relationship between humans and animals changed after the flood. Before the flood, you know they were they were there. And now uh, things have changed a little bit. And yeah, I'm not going to say that, you know, animals will attack human beings. There is a definite uh, proof of that. But I think there's also a fear. Most animals still have a fear of human beings. And every beast, you know, animals, he, you know, all this are there and uh, into your hands. He said, literally, under your authority. They are under your authority. They're meat for you, and so I think this is just from the time going forward now. Uh, God granted authority to man to use these animals as a, a resource for meat. Now, maybe it happened before the flood, but we don't have any, uh, uh, we don't have any uh, thing showing that. I mean, that probably wasn't with, by God's approval, and, and, but there's one condition. One condition. God has some condition. The blood was not to be consumed. In addition, their permission to kill was for dietary purposes. That's why they were doing it and not for revenge against others. They're not doing it for revenge. We're doing it for uh, the necessities of life, you know. So eating raw meat is not one thing we're supposed to do. And I was thinking about that. Some people like their steak rare, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. And, uh, but... Uh, you know, what, what, maybe what thoughts and fears are experienced as they leave the ark. I, I'm not sure I would have any imagination or any idea of what to say about that. Uh, you, know, you know, just that God 
puts a special emphasis here on this here about the blood of animals. And uh, I think God has called us to be wise stewards of things, and he, he provides, and especially to the uh, respect for human life. And so uh, we need to uh, we need to be deep. Okay, we need to be sure we're doing that. And so, and now we're going to get into the fact, the, the warning that uh, uh, God is, is giving to Noah here and his family. And surely your blood of you will I require, at the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hands of man, at the hands of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood by by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. And you be fruitful and multiply, bringing forth abundantly, and multiply therein. So, you know, he said, I'm going to require this of you. And, and I, you know, sometimes this is, uh, when we get into the Hebrew and stuff like that, you know, speaks of, a, uh, you know, the, the sanctity there and... Uh, you know, it requires a, it's a penalty expressed here. And, a, and then sometimes when they really wanted somebody to understand something, then they spoke the same thing in different ways. <laughs> Have you ever said that to somebody? Now repeat what I just said, you know, make sure they understand it. You know, you know, God created man in his own image. There's no doubt about that. And in the, and that Christ died for every man. So therefore, Every purpose, every person of every race possesses full dignity and is worthy of respect and Christian love. We love everybody. That is a commandment. Love the Lord thy God as, the, you know, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, every beast, the penalty for taking a human life extended to both the animals and man. We, we, you can get into that. I'm not going to do it a whole lot, but if an ox uh, gored someone and they died, then that animal and, and the owner could be put to death. And, you know, the, the translation life of man literally is this, brother of every man. So that speaks of the kinship of all humanity. You know, uh, flashback to the, the murder of Abel by his brother Cain and God, who, th that we are our brother's keeper. We are that. You know, in the Old Testament, the idea of shedding blood referred to premeditated murder. You know, that's what it's talking about. And then, by man shall his blood be shed. I think three times in verse 5, God said he would require the lifeblood of a murderer. In verse 6, humanity itself becomes the instrument of caring for, carrying out God's accounting. Humanity is both the victim and the avenger of God in this order. And so again, I just want to emphasize in the image of God. You know, that's it. And even his own image, the, thus to attract human life is to attack God because he is the image of God. So, you know... Uh, and, and after dealing with death, God turned back his focus to uh, back to life. And, his, you know, he said, and you, in verse 7, his words, you know, I think the, the primary command for humanity and Noah and his family was to replenish life on earth rather than extinguishing it. Let's don't wipe it out. Let's, you know, so Noah and his sons. God directed could be summed up as, as this, make life, don't take life. Make life, don't take life. You know, so these, you know, in this commandment here that are this covenant that God is entering in with Noah, that uh, precedes the date of the Mo, uh, Mosaic law. And, uh, you know, but it's still directing the sanctity of life. Ultimately, God's focus more on life than he does death. You know, he, re he returns to the commandment uh, to be fruitful and multiply. And after God delivered Noah and his family, God made some special promises, didn't he? Those promises are still in effect today. They're, they're still there. You know, hey, look at 8 through 15. We'll try to get through those rather quickly. 
And God spoke unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I beheld, and I and I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seeds after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowls of the uh, and of the fowls of the cattle, every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark and every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall your be flesh be cut off any more by water of a flood, neither shall there be any more flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is a token of the covenant which I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a token of my covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, the bow shall be seen in the clouds, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become floods to destroy the flesh. To destroy flesh. And so, you know, just establish a covenant. You know, and, and you know, there are three different times in the passage that, that, that we see this, and it means to fix, it means to stand, it means to confirm, and so you know. Just just think about that. Initially, uh, the covenant here involved those in the ark after the flood, but it's extended to all creation, and it God, uh, you know, every living creature, just everything, you know. The term cut off there in verse eleven, you know, could be t determined wiped out or destroyed. You know, when it, you know God. Uh, covenant with Abraham in the ancient world, an animal would be cut in half, and and the parties being placed under the obligation would pass between the parts of the animal, and in a sense, both parties were saying, may I also be cut asunder like this animal if I violate this agreement. Now, you talk about some serious things in Old Testament times and, and that uh, about covenant and saying, I'll do this and I'll do that. You know, and Noah's is saying it's just to all generations. It's a, you know, this token that we have is the, uh, the rainbow, and uh, so we we have that, and and a covenant is basically a contract or agreement between two parties. That's that's what it is. Ancient covenant usually set down the rules for how a stronger person or group would treat a lesser person or group, but but in the Bible. I think God makes covenant with his people as a promise of his blessing and protection. He's going to bless us. He's going to, he's going to protect us. And so, you know, as we think about this this week and we go into our daily lives and we see people, let's just remember that we as God's people, that we're to be stewards of God's provision. God has given us everything we need to, uh, yeah, and we're to stand up for those who have been murdered, you know, uh, going back again to abortion. Got to say that. We know that's relevant today. And we need to reflect God's value and priority in his creation. Now, those are some things that we do. You know, we're, we're protected by God. He's promised us all these things. He's not going back on his promises. He promised to send a Savior. He sent a Savior. We have Jesus Christ as our Savior. He protects us, and we are to do things according to God's law. Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate you. Uh, come and join us live at our Sunday school classes. May God bless you is our prayer.